If you love the Star Wars prequels, I have good news for you. Disney plus his Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show is on par with those. Based on my introduction, that's either going to scare you or excite you. And even though the prequels split that fan base, I do believe 100% of them joined together and said Ewan McGregor was great. And he's once again back as Obi-Wan. Kind of. He doesn't really do any Obi-Wan-ish type stuff. Unless you count running very slowly, a Jedi skill. Disney Plus released the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi because I guess one wasn't enough torture. This is a sequel to Star Wars 1, 2, and 3, which were prequels to 4, 5, and 6. It takes place before The Mandalorian and before The Book of Boba Fett, but after Revenge of the Sith, but before Rogue One. I would prefer to watch the prequels because at least stuff happens in those. Here, we really are just watching Obi kind of like hang out on Tatooine for the 500th time. Is there nothing more in Star Wars than Tatooine, an occasional trip? across the country. It's like, here is Sand Planet. How exciting for a space opera. I joked before this show was announced that it would be funny if the whole thing was just Obi-Wan hanging out at his hut, like sweeping, uh, doing the laundry, whatever he has to do to just stay out of sight and out of mind of young Luke Skywalker, who he's spying on, who for some reason, um, they're trying to keep secret from their dad, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, but they have him go with his relatives. Makes sense. And he has a sister, Princess Leia, who they're also trying to keep hidden and secret and safe by having her go with a prominent family where, where she's a princess. Also, also that, that makes sense too. This is doing the exact thing I was worried it would do. Show the young Luke Skywalker and Leia running around baby's day out style, trying to get away from Inquisitors or whoever else is after them. And it just takes away from the mystery and the excitement of episodes 4, 5, and 6 when Luke finds out he's a Jedi. And it just goes even further to showcase what a failure Obi-Wan Kenobi and the other Jedi are. This guy goes out of his way to not interfere or help people. It, it comes off as really pathetic and I don't want to see that guy. He also has lost connection with the Force so we don't get to see him do anything cool in the first two episodes outside of levitate a young Leia who he spent 20 minutes trying to catch up to. She's really not fast. It's just everyone else is slow beyond all comprehension. The basic plot is this. Obi-Wan's in hiding. There's like no Jedi's left. The ones that are have switched sides. They're now Inquisitors hunting down the remaining faction. Cool. Okay. Fine. Obi-Wan's keeping an eye on Luke. He's, he's keeping a low profile at the same time, but he's really not because he's already off planet uh, doing some misadventures and whatnot. This is really going to transition well into A New Hope. I just know it. I should also point out there's only like nine years separating this new TV series with A New Hope. I'm expected to believe that Ewan McGregor is going to transition into Alec Guinness in that time. So what did we get from episode one of this show? Well, we learned that Obi-Wan got a toy for Luke. That was nice, kind of a kind of a godfather type of gift to give him. Very cool, very very special. It's about as exciting and warranted as how Han Solo got his last name. The cinematography in this show ranges wildly between very competent, very nice looking to okay, we have the B team in today. Let's just try to get through this. Especially with the Leia Organa stuff. It's like an episode of Zack and Cody. Uh, the quality dip is massive, very colorful, very poppy. There is a scene in the first episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi, so embarrassingly bad. You could have told me I was watching one of those straight-to-DVD Mary-Kate and Ashley movies, and I would have believed you. Please allow me to paint you a picture of what's going to happen here. Little Leia Organa is taking a stroll through the woods because she's a rebel with a cause. And as she's out there, she comes across a sketchy individual. At first I was freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh, is this a Kevin Spacey situation? But no, thankfully he just wants to kidnap her. She quickly determines, not a good situation I'm in, takes a beeline the other direction. Keep in mind, she's 10 years old, so she's moving about as fast as pushing a boulder up a hill. Fortunately for our little princess, these guys run about as well as stormtroopers aim. After the girl! <laughs> Uh, 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 it goes downhill here. Whoa, look up for that branch! Ah! Oh, ouch! Ouchie! Pinecone! Stop, little girl! Was that a tree up there? Coming towards me? It's getting closer. I'm right next to it. Oh! 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 
after this shenanigans is over, she gets caught anyways. So what was the point? What was the point? If you're thinking, Adam, who cares? It's one small scene in a, in a much grander scheme of things. Well, this scene happens again in the second episode where these professional inquisitors are trying to track her down and Obi-Wan as well because he gave him the slip. And so now she's on rooftops running and none of these idiots can catch them. There's a point where Obi-Wan finally does because she falls off the side of the rooftop and he, he uses the force for the first time. I don't know where the inquisitor is. I'm pretty sure she was right behind him. But I guess she just stopped for a power lunch or, or a nap. I, I'm, not, I'm not really understanding what happened there, but this was just miserable. This whole thing was terrible. I usually watch this show with my family. My 10-year-old, my 13-year-old, my wife. None of them wanted to see this. They were all checked out. Burnt out already from past Star Wars shows. And so now here we are, a grown man hate watching a Disney Plus Star Wars thing, and I'm done. I'm out. Unless I start hearing good things about this show, I have zero reason to continue. We know where it's going. We, we know where this is going to end up at episode four. All of this pageantry or padding, whatever you want to call it even, it, it's so useless. And it's doing nothing but discrediting characters we at one point kind of liked. Well, there you have it. My thoughts on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe as I post tons of movie and TV show related content here all the time. Maybe hit the notification bell even so these propagate in your feed. And I'll see you next time. Can't wait until C-3PO and R2-D2 inevitably show up in this because of course they will. Maybe Chewbacca is in the mix? Maybe Yadel? Is that the name of a uh, female Yoda? Is it Yadel? While I ponder these questions and many more, you can see that there's stuff to click on next to me. Really, I'm, I'm like Obi-Wan Kenobi right now, the TV show. I'm just padding this out. Just uh, milking it for all it's worth.